Welcome to the Server Crowd Podcast. In this episode, we're going to install Microsoft Server 2003. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you can find the PowerPoint slides and a little bit better video at servercrowd.com slash post slash EP002. So we're going to start out with some preliminary information. First of all, I'm installing using Virtual PC for demonstrations. So there may be some slight differences for you. Um, depending on what you're using, if you're using virtualization or physical hardware. Um, so just to be aware of that. Also, you need to boot from CD1. Um, Server 2003 cannot be installed by booting from a floppy disk anymore um, for the simple fact that nobody really uses floppies anymore to any serious amount. So going to have to boot from a CD and that's going to require that you adjust some BIOS settings um, by on pretty much most older hardware. Most newer hardware will actually be able to boot from the CD from the get-go. And depending on what virtualization software you're doing, using, you may have to look it up for that as well. So the first server that we're going to build is going to have a configuration as such. Its name is going to be Server01, and it has one disk in it in the virtual environment of 8,192 megabytes or 8 gigabytes. And we're going to partition it. Um, no matter what your physical disk size is, we're going to partition the first partition where the operating system gets installed that's only going to be 3 gigabytes or 3072 megabytes. Okay, and that's important because we're going to use the rest of that space later on in a different lab. Now let's go over some side notes. Um, we're not going to be installing R2, uh, which is the second disk, and you're going to need to run Windows Update and install all of the updates on the machine after we finish this lab. And that's just going to be to make sure that the system is pure and clean and is going to be compatible with all of the future things that we're going to do with it. So next, we're going to do a demonstration. So I'm going to bring in this virtual PC, which is paused, and I'm going to unpause it. And you'll see it's going to boot up right into the setup. And here it says, press F6 if you need to install a third-party SCSI or serial ATA driver, and then F2 to run automated system recovery. Those are two important things to note. Um, system recovery we're going to get into in a later chapter. If you're running this on some physical hardware, um, you may need to install some serial ATA drivers for drive controllers, or if you have a RAID controller, you'll need to install drivers for that. Next, you're going to be presented with this screen here after it's finished booting from the CD. And it's going to say, welcome to setup. This portion of setup prepares your Microsoft Windows to run on your computer. Setup, press enter. To repair Windows using the Recovery Console, press R, and to quit, press F3. And we're going to get into Recovery Console later on, so for now we're just going to press Enter. Then it's going to present you with the license agreement, and you need to read this. Um, depending on what your licensing status is, depends on what applies to you and what doesn't. Once you've read it and you agree, press F8. And you're going to be given the list of disks that have been detected. Uh, if you don't see any disks here, you're going to need to reboot. And you're going to have to use the F6 option to install some extra drivers for your drive controller. And you're going to have to dig that up. So the first thing that we have here is an empty disk. So what we're going to do is we're going to create that initial partition of 3072 megabytes. To do that we're going to 
select this unpartitioned space by just arrowing down until we're over it because as long as we're in this blue screen like this we don't have use of our mouse so I'm just going to move that off the screen for now. So push the C key and that's going to take you to the create partition wizard. Or, and in this box you're going to go ahead and enter the partition size which for us is going to be 3072 and press enter and you'll see now that that partition has been created. We're not going to go ahead, we're not going to create the other partition yet. So just press enter again and it's going to give you the option to format. You have the option to format as NTFS and FAT quickly or normally. If you're installing in a virtual environment as I am, you can go ahead and use the quick option. If you're installing on real hardware that you haven't done recent um, OS loads on, or if it's an older piece of equipment, I definitely recommend doing the full format. After the format is completed, the system is going to copy some files to your hard disk and then reboot. So it's finished formatting, it checked the hard disk, and now it's going to copy the files. And this should only just take a few minutes.